really would like to continue going forward. And what I would like to teach today is um, uh, um, how, how that three dynamic of the covenant of love engenders a practical faith as opposed to just an abstract faith. A practical faith, and a practical faith in divine providence. So the key word here is practical faith, as opposed to just an abstract faith. That would be the main thing that I would like to cover today. So a quick summary in regards to the three dynamics of love. Um, I'm gonna use this one over here. Um, and basically the idea behind the three dynamics of love is to provide people who have already done a Marian consecration or want to do a Marian consecration to have the tools uh, to know how to live out that Marian consecration. Uh, there's a lot of material, I think good material out there in regards to preparing oneself to do a consecration to the Blessed Mother. The one that's become most popular right now is the 33 Days to Morning Glory. There's a, also the classic one of St. Louis de Montfort, and there's many other ways that one can prepare uh, to do a total consecration, a, a total entrustment, as we call the Second Crusade, to the Blessed Mother. But the question that remains after that is, oh, that's great, I did a consecration to the Blessed Mother, it's phenomenal, it's so beautiful, and often you feel, people feel the presence of Mary in their lives when they do the consecration. But what I notice that often we lack, we lack is, okay, we have made a consecration, now how do we live it out? What do, I, what do I do? How do I live out a total consecration to the Blessed One? And here I'm drawing from Schoenstedt, as uh, drawn from the founding document of Schoenstedt, how Schoenstedt originated in October 18, 1914, and how a hundred plus years later, uh, it has a methodology that now I share with you as a way to live out that consecration. So the first thing, and those who remember, help me out. What is the first thing we do? I'm going to use this door. For me. <laughs> What's the first thing we do? Ask Mary to come down. There you go. We ask the Blessed Mother, Mary, come down to us. And come down to us, usually we highly encourage that you have a little home shrine. This is the very simple home shrine. A little a center prayer place in your house where you have the image of our Blessed Mother and you ask the Blessed Mother not just for your picture to, no, let me put this over here, not just to uh, have a beautiful picture of Mary, but really to ask her to come down. Mary, this is going to be your room. It's going to be your throne. This is going to be where you and I, Mary, are going to walk together. This is how I'm going to live out my consecration to you. I ask you to come down here, be with me here, and from here I'm going to do what? Before that one. I'm asking the Blessed Mother to be here with me so that she can help you what? Grow in holiness. There you go. So that I can grow in holiness. So therefore an arrow coming down, Mary come down, me, Mary help me to grow in holiness. Okay, that's the first dynamic. Right? That's the first dynamic. Now let's go to the second dynamic. The second dynamic is, well, if I did in my in my consecration, I said, Mary, I'm totus tuus, the famous words in the uh, uh, pontifical motto of St. John Paul II, totus tuus, I'm all yours. So put into practice means at the end of the day, I review my day, and I write it down on a piece of paper, and I give it to the Blessed Mother. Mary, it's all yours. Totus tuus. So the concrete methodology here is, at the end of the day, and here, this will be my, we call this the capital of grace, at the end of the day, everything that has come my way, perhaps some of your uh, cards were here, of uh, priesthood anniversary, Everything is here. Hello, hello. I'm putting everything here. Another beautiful car. You know. I have workbooks. You know, this is when I was a uh, oh, priesthood ordination. When I went to mass, priesthood ordination. Where are these? Uh, this was yesterday. Yeah, June the 17th. So I write it down at the end of the day and I put it there. Mary, literally, it's yours. At the end of the day, 
I renew my day, I give it to you. Do we give just the good things? No. We give it all. All includes also not the good things. Our failures, our mistakes, our sins. You know, those things we give to him. Everything. Because if you say everything, that includes the bad things too. They see if you're in this whole classic. If you don't give it to Mary, what's going to happen? The devil's, yeah. the devil's going to get a hold of it. He's going to use it to accuse you and to just bring you down. So better put it, better give it to the blessed mother. Better in her hands. She's merciful. She's loving. She will help you. She will encourage you so that you can continue growing in holiness. So the first dynamic is Mary, come down. I strive out. Night. I you know, sit down in front of you because you're here. I'm going to spend some time with you. I take a piece of paper and deposit it there. The good, the bad, the ugly, everything goes there. If I could, I'd put myself inside. That's the whole idea. <laughs> but uh, when I die, then you could bury me inside of a capital grace. But for now, I keep bringing it to you. But this is first level. Second level is, well, our Blessed Mother is also participating in the, 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 the depositing and what happens here. Because especially the bad things you offer, well, she's going to help you with. But she's also contributing to what goes in there. She's going to repair. She's going to take advantage of your mistakes to be a, a teaching moment. Uh, to be, okay, what's the lesson we learned from this mistake so that we don't commit it again? Uh, she also celebrates with you the victories. That's the, she will sing Magnifica with you. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. She will join you in singing praises to God. So Mary is also putting into the equation. So now we have a partnership. We have a covenant. We're, we're collaborating. I'm putting, she's putting. Right? First level, she comes down. I strive for holiness. Second level, I deposit. Mary also receives and enhances it, magnify it, repair it. She's also put into it. The third level is, and here's the powerful thing. From that which we put here... We ask, now that this tank is full, every 18th of the month, and today is 18th of the month, so when uh, every 18th of the month, we've been teaching people, okay, what do we do with all this? Well, every 18th of the month, let's get together for Mass, you know, and imagine yourself with your tank so proud, filled with the good and the bad and the ugly. Everything is here by the hand of Blessed Mother. Okay, Mary. And some people actually bring their image as a symbol of me and Mary. We're bringing forth all the things that we work this month. We bring it to Mass because as Catholic, there's no better way to offer things to the Father than in with through Christ Jesus through the Holy Eucharist. So we bring it to Mass. We consecrate it through the Eucharist so that Christ can take it from our hands to the hands of Mary, all of us uh, working together. She takes it, offers to the Father, the Father receives it, the Father sends the Spirit. And a symbol of the Spirit and at work is then we take this little piece of paper and we go to the piazza and we burn it. So I baptize. I baptize with water, but someone greater than me is coming that he will baptize with fire and the Spirit. So, the symbol of fire. So, uh, what happens is, the third level is, that this becomes the way that not only am I grow in holiness, but this is my contribution to help others. This, together with everyone who's bringing it every 18th of the month, offering the Eucharist, is how we actually how, how we respond to the desire of our lady when she appeared to Fatima. Pray for the conversion of the world. Well, we're not only praying, we're, we're, we're contributing to the, to the salvation of the world, to the good of others. Because now from this, together with our best mother and everybody collaborating, now we're working towards the wayside shrine. After Mass, we bury it at the wayside shrine. That's what we're in the process of. This is unfolding from this, practicing this dynamic. What we would love to do is have a wayside shrine that becomes the unifier of all the home shrines of the parish. Now, because 
So you're, you're doing this at your home, on my own. And then how you bring it to the 18th of the month is a we, church, community. And then we burn it, and now we deposit all our communal effort into the wayside shrine. And in the wayside shrine, we ask, Blessed Mother, the third dynamic, make this a place of pilgrimage where people can come and receive from the fruit of our labor. So a very concrete example uh, of how this works. Let me just grab one and see what, what comes out here. I don't know what comes out. I don't know what I'm over. Okay, well, uh, congratulations. Uh, so someone congratulated me on my priesthood anniversary. Muchas felicidades, Padre, que Dios lo bendiga, que sean muchos años más de sacerdote. So thank you. Uh, translation, forgot. Uh, thank you very much, Father. May God continue to bless you for many more years of priesthood. So this was someone, you know, uh, asking that I be blessed. This is someone thanking God, right? Muchas felicidades, Padre, que Dios. So this is someone congratulating me. And, and, and praying that, that I'd be blessed for many more years as a priest. So instead of taking this for me, it's a, someone's desires for me, I said, okay, Mary, Mary, I give it to you. Blessings and many years of service, because that's what someone wished for me, now I give it to you, Mary. We go to the 18th of the month to Mass, we deposit everything, including this very specific one. Then we burn it, and we want the Blessed Mother to distribute all of this from the Wayside Shrine. So one of the many thousands of graces that people deposit and burn is this little one. This one is blessing for someone of many years. Blessing someone with many years. Now imagine at the Wayside Shrine, someone is going to visit the parish to, I don't know, go to the office or whatever. And that person passes by the Wayside Shrine and sees and feels the force of thousands of, of capital of graces being accumulated and a whole community depositing and collaborating with her and growing it. Of course, a person who passes by, they'll be like, what's going on here? I feel something here. And, and in due time, we'll have uh, the image of our Blessed Mother like this, but in a, and put the wall a bit bigger. Uh, and then the person will say, what a beautiful thing. And then perhaps they get inspired to pray. Say, Mary, I need so many blessings. And I feel life is, 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 is like closing up on me. Can you pray that I receive blessings in many more years? A person without knowing was asking for the grace that I had and the Blessed Mother goes into her files of all the graces that people have been distributing. Oh, I got one just for you. <laughs> this one. And she said, and the Blessed Mother gives it to her. And the person who doesn't know what's behind this whole dynamic, they only know that something attracted, something of force. From her heart she prayed, and the Blessed Mother heard, and had from where to give because we are collaborating with her. Not only what I gave, but she also enhanced this. She is full of grace. She is the mother of God. So now she's giving to this person blessings and many more years together with the blessings of Mary. Something I worked, something she worked, together collaborating for the good of others, but in a very practical way. And all of a sudden what you were asking for now you receive. That's yours. <laughs> so as she begins to experience the fruits of blessings and many more years of service, by the way, she's a sister, <laughs> how appropriate she is to want to receive that grace, she will start wondering, what happened? I went to that shrine there. I asked for this. And I feel I got the answer. And now she's attracted. And now she's curious. And she, now she wants to find out what was going on in there. Because now she comes back. And then comes back. And then comes back. And the Blessed Mother keeps giving, keeps giving, keeps giving. Now this became a place of pilgrimage. Now this became an attractive force of the maternal love of the Father through the instrument of Mary, the Mother of God. 
she eventually will meet someone else who happens to study. So Joyce is coming with you, she's bringing, she's doing her, her, her busy Martha things of, you know, <laughs> working for the Blessed Mother, putting flowers, and you come by and you're like, and you see Joyce, and you're like, hey, hey, you, 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 can you explain me what's going on here? Because I've been coming a couple of times and, ooh, I don't know what to put into words, and I, what's going on? And then Joyce will be, oh, yeah, yeah, let me tell you, okay. And then she begins to explain the three dynamics of love. We ask the Blessed Mother to come here. As we strive for holiness, we all work really hard to put things in the capital of grace. But our Blessed Mother enhances it and makes it even better so that when anybody who comes, they will be receiving from what we collaborated. She's like, oh, I love that. Can I be part of that too? Oh, well, yeah. All you have to do is do a couple And then now you became an instrument in the hands of our Blessed Mother to draw someone to grow in holiness with the help of Mary. So this is what we refer to as the three dynamics of the covenant of love with Mary. First dynamic, Mary comes down, as our holiness. Second dynamic, we contribute, she enhances. Third dynamic, our Blessed Mother uses it to distribute and to draw people to herself. Any question? Because I want to build upon but I want to make sure everybody understands. Everybody understand? Let me give you a moment of silence there for you. Take your notes. I drink some water. Let allow you to form me any questions you may have and to let it sink in. So, Father, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Seems like I've known you a lot longer than March 15th, 2020. When was your first weekday? You see? That's another affirmation. <laughs> I came in March 15th, 2020. But it seems like you've been here for years. <laughs> see, I'm not the only one. Didn't you say weekdays? You see, Mom? You yeah. see, Mom? I, know. I came here on March 20, uh, March 15 of 2020. Amazing. Okay. I say, Mom, I was saying to people, oh, it's been a great pleasure to work with you for the past three years and a half. And my mom corrected me and said, you haven't been there for three and a half years. You've only been there for two years. I'm like, no, man. And then she had to actually show me pictures and show the cameras and you arrived March 15, 2020. How come it feels like three and a half years? But it's because of the great things that have been happening. This, this whole work, you being here at this retreat on June the 18th of 2022, yeah, time-wise, it's two years that I've been here that all of a sudden now you're here. But the fruitfulness of two years, that is the work of three and a half. Why? Because I'm not doing it alone. See, I'm depositing it, but she is enhancing it. So two years of service, she kicks it up on another notch. She's like, well, I'm going to put a year and a half of work that would have taken you to make that possible because it's you and me. It's a partnership. <laughs> Even, even in the midst of the pandemic. And I would like to say, not despise, but precisely because of the pandemic. And I'm going to go to that a little bit later as, as I go to this. So, any questions so far about the three dynamics of love? Because now, I'm going to continue moving forward. Any questions? It's clear in your mind. Absolutely clear. No doubt. Raise your hand if you are already living this out. Mm -hmm. All right, good. Uh, hopefully that will be an inspiration for others. Uh, start. Just start. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. And if it's not perfect, even that attempt, put it in her hands, she will prepare. She will help you fall into a good habit of doing this. Just, you know, Father, if I do this, I'm not leaving my sins around in a bucket for the people who come and go. I'm going to use the shredder and bring that. You can do that to you want. <laughs> Actually, it will make it easier for Bernie. <laughs> uh, and by the way, the, uh, the way I, I write, um, I write it in codes uh, that, that, that really no one really will understand what I'm, you know. I, like, I, I put, yeah, I just, because I don't have to write a paragraph to tell her what I'm giving. She already knows. But enough words for me to feel like I articulated and gave it. So it doesn't have to be a full, otherwise you'd be writing letters. No, no, that's a lot of writing. Just bullet points, just little drawings, images. Okay, Mary, especially when you're doing this at the end of the day. Okay. Uh, the practice is 
at the end of the day, you write it down, you give it to her. The next day, early in the morning, 30 minutes before the house wakes up, those who have children and family and husband, 30 minutes before the house wakes up, you know what that means, a uh, cup of coffee, sit with the Blessed Mother, <coughs> talk about it. All right, Mary, about yesterday, there's something there that I should grow with, try a little bit better, uh, especially the areas where I need to grow in holiness. So it's in the evening, I surrender, I give it all. In the morning, let's talk. Let's talk, man. We even develop a, a, a show called Cafe Mate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, which the idea was, you know, people sharing the graces of their conversation with their blessed mother. Cafe Mate. Having a cup of coffee with the blessed mother in the morning, share the graces with others. That's evangelizing. Cafe Mate. Uh, there was our host right here, our, our TV host. <laughs> of Cafe Mate. Um, I want to say thank you very much. Oh, no problem. It's been no a problem. blessing for the last three and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I least he got to through that on himself. Okay, so we're going to move forward. And, and uh, in the evening, we deposit. In the morning, we talk to her. And we make a commitment to try to do whatever Mary is indicating us to do throughout the day. At the end of the day, once again, how did I do? Yes, no, 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 no. Everything goes back in the, in the tank. Give it to her. The next day, okay, let's try again. Now, what begins to happen is, if you're practicing, by the way, this is the abbreviation for the three dynamic of the covenant of love, three D heart. That's a good way so you don't have to write three dynamics of the covenant of love with the blessed mother. You can just do three D love. Three dynamics, like a three D. Three D, three dynamics of the covenant of love. What I would like to teach you today is that if you practice the three dynamics of love, it will begin to engender in you a practical faith, as opposed to an abstract faith. Because you're doing, you're growing in faith with the Blessed Mother. So our Blessed Mother helps you by this three dynamics of a covenant of love to grow in practical faith. So, to understand practical faith, it's good to put it in comparison with abstract faith. This is abstract faith, right here. One, uh, God exists. Two, God is almighty. Three, God is my father. God is father. God is father. This is, this is faith in the head. And in, in faith, I believe that God exists. I believe that God is almighty. I believe that God is a good father. Now it definitely presents the next question. Okay, then why is there evil and suffering in the world? But you're still at the head. What will be the answer for the question of evil? God gave us freedom. God gave us freedom. Good. Jesus. God gave us Jesus. God gave us freedom. And there's a phrase that I often use in Spanish that provides an answer for that. So there is no evil or wrong or suffering that eventually will be followed by something greater, some, a greater good. So that's just a theological foundation. So if God allows something bad to happen, it's be, he's allowing it because if something is happening. If something bad happens, it doesn't mean that God stopped existing or that he's not all powerful, that he's bad. So if one, two, and three are true, the question of evil and suffering needs to be answered because it's questioning this. The answer is, well, God does exist. He's almighty and all powerful. He allows evil and suffering because in his goodness, through that evil or bad thing that is happening, He's working something greater. But that's still faith in the head. It's abstract faith. Necessary faith. If you don't have that foundation, then I don't know how you move forward in your life. Because when the cross comes your way, you know, okay, the Father is still existing. I know he's still around. He's, somehow he is allowed in his mighty power for this cross that is 
happening to me right now. I don't know why, but I do trust, and it's my faith in my cabeza, in my head, that he's doing it for a greater reason. I don't know what the greater reason is, but I trust. Now, when you start saying, I trust, is when you're beginning to go from just faith in the head to faith in practice. Now you're saying, because I trust in him who is my father. I trust in him who is my, now you're doing a practical application of it to me. A personal application of what I believe in faith. So this is in the head, and now we move it into practice. You're my father. I trust you. I'm your child, your beloved <coughs> son. One, two. Now, you do the, you do, the father allows crosses and suffering and things in our life. So now the application of it is discernment. Why would the Lord, why, why would my loving father, my all-powerful, good, loving father, why would he be allowing this in my life? You begin to question why this is happening to me. And I, I already believe that God exists. He's almighty, he's good, and he, if he allowed it, it's because he's working something greater. What may be the greater good that my father is working through this cross? Dependence on God. Good, good. And I, and I guess you have already something specific of a cross you were dealing with. And he's telling you, be dependent in me and me alone. Each one of you have a cross. Raise your hand if you have a cross. I can give you one. I got plenty to give. Uh, which one do you want? <laughs> we all have crosses. And the Father is allowing them. He, we trust that he allows them because through it he's working something greater. So now is our, our, our job, our task is to discern. Okay, you've allowed this cross. You're loving, you're good, you're powerful. If you're allowing it, it's because you're working something greater. What is the greater good? That's the sermon. And this is something that is constantly happening. Because that's life. Crosses all around us. Good, bad, and ugly. But if it's happening, it's because something greater that the Lord is working. Something he wants. Now, once you've done the sermon, and here let's put the question... What the greater good? Once you have that question in mind in the sermon, and once you begin to have the answer, now you can collaborate. Because if you start sensing, oh, I can see what he's doing. He's allowing this so that this can happen. In your case, he's allowing this so that I can grow in dependence of him. Because I'm not able to depend on anyone else or in my own strength or my own skills. Oh, he's, he's really trying to help me to depend on him. I'm just using your example. Then, if that's what the Lord is working in, is that the fruit of your discernment, then collaboration. Submit. Lord, I depend on you. You let go. Let go of trying to control things. Let go of trying to be independent. Say, Lord, I surrender completely in you. Now, each cross has a reason why the cross exists. So it is our task to discern it so that then we can collaborate and usher the greater good. We go back to the testimony of this gentleman. He said, Father, you've only been here two years? How come it feels like three and a half years? Because in my discernment, once I begin to detect why is the Father allowing this, oh, that's the greater good he's working for? Okay, let's collaborate. Now you're collaborating with God to usher the greater good. What will take a person three years and a half of work can be done in two years because you're working with God. The one who can make the impossible possible. You see? Right. So... Yeah. I don't always get the discernment of what it is. 
And that's, and that's why when you bring Mary into the picture, how practicing this three dynamics of love help us grow in this practical faith where one, two, and three happen. So it looks like this. At the end of the day, I'm going here. So March the 15th, I arrived to St. Cecilia. Oh, the fun is so exciting. I'm here. Put it over there. With some new beginnings. I see what's going to happen here. And I go to Mass the weekend of March 15, grand opening. And I'm so excited. And I put it in. And then I go here. And I'm, now it's March the 19th. The next week is about to come. And all the churches are closed down. Um, um, how, um, um, a door just closed for me. I, how am I, what, what, I, what am I supposed to do now? You sent me here, March 15th, I'm ready to go. So now I'm discerning, but also collaborating now. Okay, that's what I gotta do, okay? Let's collaborate with the will of God. They've been live from San Cecilia. <laughs> and then uh, here we go, I mass at the little chapel of the shrine, uh, at the, um, of the sanctuary, uh, mass is in my, in my house. Uh, and what else can I do? Uh, so I, you know, I, I wanna do more, I don't know what to do. What is, so I put it there. Next day, wake up at the cup of, cup of coffee, say, well, what about giving retreats? Well, I like retreats. Virtual retreat. Oh, that's, a, that's a new concept. Well, right, let's try it. All right, live from now we have a retreat for, and we did a retreat for, we did a retreat for Lent. We did a retreat for Holy Week. We did a retreat for East, for Easter. Uh, we did a retreat for Pentecost. We did a retreat for, like, Every opportunity, okay, another retreat, another retreat, another retreat. I just do a retreat after. And as a mariologist, I was doing retreats, but to deepen and to teach people to relate to our Blessed Mother. So it was Mary and Lent, Mary and Holy Week, Mary and Easter, Mary and Pentecost, Mary and Mary and Mary. So, okay, okay, this is what I do. But notice what's happening. God exists. Oh my, it's good. Why will he allow the pandemic? <clears throat> well, I trust in him. He's working something greater. I don't know what it is. Mary, can you help me? Start 
Start discerning. Maybe, what is it? Maybe like, maybe a couple, oh, okay, I could do that. And now I'm collaborating. But this is with the help of Mary. So, not alone. I'm doing it with Mary. Every night, I'm writing down the capital grade. Okay, I put it there. It's yours. Every morning, dialogue, discerning with Mary. Uh, what am I supposed to do here? And here it's a, a new language that I would like to use um, as we continue teaching. What I'm discerning is what are the closed doors, what are the open doors, and where is the creative resultant? This is trench that language. So uh, this is new language, but it will make sense pretty quick. I'm looking for closed doors, I'm looking for open doors, and I'm looking for the creative resultant. And I have it written here too. But you want to, I'm looking for, I'm facing closed doors, looking for open doors, and trying to figure out where is the creative resultant. Right? That's how I'm doing the sermon. Because once I figure out where the spirit is leading, then I just collaborate as an instrument of Mary, as a in Spanish. <laughs> My switch broke there. <laughs> Secondary causes. Secondary causes. That's a secondary cause. Secondary cause. Now, I'm going to speak about one, two, three, and four. I'm going to move that up to the, this side. So this is the time where we put the camera in the other side. Now, closed door. When I was here in the midst of the pandemic, that was definitely a very shut down, closed door. The church was closed down. <laughs> Literally, it was a closed door with the Blessed Mother. What am I supposed to do? I'm discerning where is the door open. So you got to imagine you go through life, one door closes. And I said, okay, I guess I'm not, I can't go there. God closed the door for me. I, there's no, and often this, and this is what we do. This is, this is us wanting things our own way, right? So I want to go there. And because I am my own God, I go wherever I want, right? I'm going to go there. As I'm going there, the Lord says, begins to close the door. And you're, rah, 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 I'm going there. I said, I'm going there. <laughs> Open the freaking door. I'm going to go that way. <laughs> and you're, you're the rest of your life fighting because this door won't open. Uh, could it be that God doesn't want you to go to that door? Yet, you're banging your head against the door that is closed. Well, the best thing you can do is, okay. <laughs> Blessed Mother, the door closed. I don't know why. I don't need to know why. I trust. But can you show me where is the open door so that I can go? What's the open door? You can tell me so that I can walk. Well, start praying this. Okay, I'll go that way. See? <laughs> I think it is. All right, okay. And now there's an opening door. You go to the door that is open and you trust that God the Father had a reason why he didn't want to go there. And you know, often he's, he's kind enough to let us, he's, he sees us banging our heads like, do you really want to, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. You open the door and you, woo, you fall into a pit fire and then there's dragons and crocodiles and sharks and, and then you come out of the room. Oh. Why didn't you close that door? I don't want to go there. So, well, yeah, sometimes he listens so that, so that you, you learn. It's like, yeah, you got to trust. Okay, so, not there. And then something begins to happen. Once there's an open door, and, 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 and it's risky. It's scary. It's really scary. It's, if I'm honest, you see an open door, you're like, <laughs> you 
sure. You know, and you're, it, it's crazy, because you don't know what's behind that door. Oh, you know, that's closed. And this one is open. But an affirmation to your discernment that this is the right door, not only the door is open, but this is what you begin to sense. It's like, like a hearing in the wind. Just like you're, you're almost resisting the, the force of the spirit, the wind, pushing you towards it, either pushing or sucking you in. Because there's a strong force, which is the Holy Spirit saying, this way. And you just sense it's like, you know, you're like, well, but, but I'm not sure if I want to. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And, and it's, it's just really bringing you in. And you finally let go. Okay, let's do it. And it's like, boom, you're like, fine. Like, like really, you, all you have to do is open up and let the Spirit carry you. <clears throat> Three and a half years in two years. And that phenomenon is called creative resultant. The result of going through that open door is very creative. The image that I often use is the, that I used when I was explaining synodality. By the way, how, how am I doing with time? Uh, 10.35. What time is when I'm supposed to finish? <clears throat> birds, it's impossible for birds to migrate from the north to the south. Yeah, that's but we see it every year. I'm just speaking about birds, not human beings. <laughs> not the human snowbirds, but the, the real snowbirds. They, the snowbirds, they go from Canada, and they fly all the way to Florida. How do they do that? They can't do this all the way from north to south. If they were to do this from north to south, they will collapse. They would just die. Not even a quarter of the way over here. Yet, they make it appear. How do they make it appear? Is one, they fly together as a community. Do the V shape, right? Uh, but the one in the front in the V shape, what he's, his job is to detect where the currents of the wind are flowing. That's what the guy in the front is doing. So, you know, you see the, when you see the birds going like this and then V shape and they're going like this, it's, they haven't found the current. But when you see them going, boom, they found it. So you gotta think of the sky like a river. There's rivers in the sky. River of currents of the wind. When you mount one of those rivers of the currents of the wind, it's like if you're on a boat, a little kayak, and a, even a raft, but in a river. Well, we'll take you. So that effect is the, the creative result. Once the door open and you dare to go in, you really will mount Current of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, that will take you. And you are able to cover great distance with little effort. Why? Because you're being carried by the Holy Spirit. So the Lord closes doors. It's our job to discern, okay, He closed that door. He allowed that cross. Why? Discern. Pray. Look for the open door. Once you discover the open door, you collaborate. Jump in. Allow it to open your arms in total surrender and, and, and let it go. Let, let, let yourself go with it. You'll go with Mary, who is the spouse of the Holy Spirit. Once again, three years and a half, but it was only ready two. Why? Because in two years, I discern with Mary what are the currents. I mount myself with the current and let the V-shaped formation of our entire community and what humanly was impossible for me to do with the current of the Spirit, we did the work of three years and a half in two years. Why? Because of the creative resultant effect. Understand that? Go by the other one. You have 10 yeah, minutes. Yeah, the other one. Yeah. I only have 10 minutes. Okay. 10 minutes. Yes. Now, with that said, that's the main teaching that I want to give. Do you have any questions about what I just said?
It's really wonderful. Life changing when she took the doors. I never thought that way before. So, so practical. The challenge is, is we have too many Christians stuck just in the head. Uh, hard headed Christians. <laughs> <laughs> who are just in, 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 in a level of abstract faith. That abstract faith needs to become practical, practice in everyday living. So that it is my father taking care of me, my father whom I trust and surrender. And when he allows the crosses, it's my job to discern with the Spirit. Okay, you close the door, where is he open? So that I could collaborate with him. So that I could mount the currents of the spirit of making the impossible possible. God wants me to be a part of that. That's exciting. This is a divine adventure. That I'm able to participate in something way beyond my human capacity, yet see it go through. To fly from north to south when I know I can't fly, Yet, I am flying every year. That's awesome. That's what the Father wants us to do. But that's application of abstract faith into practical faith. And this is practical faith trusting in divine providence. God will provide. God will provide. Stop banging your head against the door, let it close, and look for the open one. And because it's challenging, scary, difficult, that's why we do it with Mary. So, Practicing the three dynamics of love engenders in us a practical faith that we're able to experience as we do it with Mary. Now, in regards to the third one, we just have finished. We're collaborating as instruments of Mary. And another strong principle is secondary causes. God is the primary cause. He, he is God. He has willed it. It's his desire. It's his wish. It's how he orchestrated things. He's in charge. This is what he wants to do. Well, good luck trying to argue against him. This is how he chose to do things. This is, this is his plan. He wants, as primary source, to use secondary sources, secondary causes. He is the primary source, the primary cause, the unmoved mover, but he desires to collaborate and use secondary causes. God wants to use you and me. Why? I don't know. This is, that's what he wants. I, but trying to figure out why, just, just to serve and collaborate. And I begin to experience, and he experiences the great adventure of divine love, then you're like, that's why the Father wants you to collaborate. That's why he wants secondary causes, so that you can feel you're part of something greater. That God can use you in your perfect imperfection for good and for the greater good of many. Because now, the two years of me doing this with the Blessed Mother, and looking for open doors, cost an entire community. The five What an adventure. And God can use a secondary together with another secondary cause, and together work for him and create great things. Now, what I have here is some of the, uh, or just articulated some of the challenges or closed doors that I experienced in the two years that I was here. Uh, before I got here was the closing of Transfiguration Church, which led to the establishment of Church at Tampa Bay as a movement in our diocese. I mentioned to you the pandemic, that was a close door. <coughs> and how that led to entering the virtual world, to doing a lot of teaching, to develop the Mariological understanding of the, the, the people of God, to contribute to the Mariological understanding with all the retreats and conferences, mm -hmm. and especially these three dynamics of a covenant of love. Highlighting home shrines, that came through the pandemic, because now people are at home, we started highlighting the domestic church and the domestic church led us, result in creativity, to home shrines. So pandemic led us to domestic church. 
domestic church, which is the open door, led us eventually to home shrine where we're teaching this. One closed door led to opening a whole bunch of other doors and very fruitful. Uh, no festival of Our Lady Guadalupe, that was a big blow for the Spanish community. That was a closed door. It then led to, well, I guess we could do a novena, a virtual novena. And the virtual novena developed into uh, the methodology of Marian evangelization, which is a merge of the Guadalupe event with the Schoenstatt spirituality into one methodology of evangelization. There's a host 11 videos, conferences that I made about that, but that came from the closed door of No Guadalupe festivities. Uh, the death of Andresito. Uh, that will take too long to explain. But this is a kid, 13-year-old kid, 14-year-old kid, who before I got here was diagnosed with, he, he consecrated himself to the Blessed Mother, and the next weekend was diagnosed with the brain tumor. And in my time, he was towards the end of his time, and eventually he died when I was sick. And the great question, why would a father allow this? <coughs> a 13-year-old kid, 14, and he died. We just did a consecration to the Blessed Mother. Why would a father allow this? What is it that is There's a greater good. What is it? And boy, that was, that was a lot of prayer with the Blessed Mother and with the family, who, by the way, are here, and the grandma is doing the covenant of love today. Mm -hmm. uh, and mom and dad is here. Her cousin, her cousin just made the covenant of love last uh, 18th of the month, uh, May 18th. The teenager who did the covenant of love is the cousin of Andresito. Andresito became the total martyr of Schoenstatt Tampa Bay. He opened a youth and with his very holy death, opened the way for the community to be open to the image of our mother Christ and the Holy Because, you know, good question would be, how do, how do you manage to convince Mexicans from Guadalupe to a German image? Good question. Man, do you want me to do how do you, what, what, what do you, what, I, I, I don't know. I don't mind. Like, we can stay with Guadalupe. It's the same as the mother. Yeah. And this is how the answer was. When Andresito was on his deathbed, and I finally managed to get there, the family was growing in interest uh, in regards to the image of in the, the whole spiritual Because they were asking me, Father, why would, why, would, why would God allow my son to die? And with them trying to discern Good, what, and then not having answers, so, well, let's just, let's just give it to the blessed mother. Let's see what she tells you. Let's just surrender. And eventually, like, I was trying to explain to them, you know, we were from domestic church to now the home shrine. They wanted to build a home shrine in their home. And they didn't have an image of our blessed mother. So I had one. I had a friend that someone gave it to me. And it's like, I, I'm going to give this to them. I know they're, 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 they're being grown and they're learning about this. So well, maybe it's a good idea to bring it now. He was, he was day, laying, he was in bed. The doctors couldn't explain why he still was alive. Everything was for him supposed to be there. But he was, he was still clinging and holding on to something. We don't know what it was. The parents kept saying, and the people said, hey, we're going to go, we're going to be okay. You know, but no. And I finally made it to their hospice, and I arrived with the image of our blessed mother to give it as a gift to them. And I, you know, I go up to them and say, you know, I, you know, I, 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 I know this is the right moment, but I wanted to give you this image so that our blessed mother could come to you in, in, in your sorrow, you know. And, and then their sheep is there as I'm talking to the parents. I brought them, the, the moment I brought the image and said that, uh, you know, she's here and I want to, Andresito gives a huge, he was unconscious of it. He was not, like, he was, it was just a body clinging for life. When I arrived, he just had a big smile. And, died. and the parents, they, it was the most beautiful death I have ever experienced. The parents laid their knees next to the, the bed. And literally, it turned into a 
praise and worship session. Great. Speaking in tongues, praising <coughs> God, singing. It was like, I was like, what am I doing? I, I didn't even feel worthy of being. It was such a powerful, and you could just feel the power of the moment. And they themselves were saying, he was waiting for her to come down so that he can go by the hand of Mary, knowing that we would be in the hands of Mary. And that's how he got her. That began to spread throughout the whole community. And that opened the door for people to be curious about it. What, what, what is it about that image? What is it about that spirituality that our Andrejito would have waited and in many ways gave his life for this. And that's why we refer to him as the photomorph of Christian's technology. Uh, at his place of burial, they, they have the, the unity cross, they have this unity cross, and his burial place. He died July 25th, which is the feast day of the apostle of James, who is the first martyr of the apostle. And today you, you will see her grandmother making the columns of blood. There's a huge current, all unfolding from there's a death, closed door, open door. What are you trying to do here? That's the point. And then the creator her soul pit has come out of and continues to come out of that. I could mention other things, you know, the church reopened, but few people were returning. How do I respond to that? That when we started doing all the Marian celebrations and the sanctifying Thursday as a way to bring people uh, and the celebration of the last day, the 18th of the month, all of that is it were a tent in, there's a closed door, where's the open door? The civil unrest, Black Lives Matter, Matters, Freud, uh, the whole civil unrest that we suffer at right in the midst of the pandemic, the answer, open door, synodality. The whole process that we begin of synodality. They had a beautiful, event to synodality where Spanish and English were at the same table listening to each other. Uh, death of Juan Jose, uh, that's the most recent one. How much time do I have? Sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, three. So, oh, three. Okay, three. I'll, I'll just give you a quick one. Juan Jose <laughs> is a still born child. Uh, mother was pregnant for three months of him. In the year of St. Joseph, they're called Jose. In the midst of consecrations, learning to be like St. Juan Diego, like the beloved disciple of Juan, John the Apostles. So when she learned that she was pregnant, she, she chose the name Juan Jose for her child, and her child died. Closed door, open door. Mary, what are you supposed to do with this? Taught them about home shrine taught them about capital grace, you know, not, you know, we give everything, includes even our own children. We give even our own children. And, uh, you know, three months, you imagine, there's, there's not much of a body born there. Uh, there's so, you know, and then they were wondering, what do we do with the body? It's like, ah, so we bury them. Joseph, St. Joseph, the years in Joseph, John, Juan Diego, uh, the beloved disciple, Juan Jose, as one of the holy innocents who is guarding the shrine. So not only is a blessed mother there, but she also has her guardians who are keeping the flame alive from that shrine, from our future wayside shrine. So with that, I, we take a break. And then we'll switch the James, who hopefully is writing the bell over there. <laughs> Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and to the world of the Amen. What I gave you is a really, this is a, my farewell letter that will be in the bulletin not this weekend, but next weekend. But it summarizes uh, the two years of of practicing closed doors, open door, creative resultant, the latter summarizes that. So you can take a moment and
and, and apply to your life. Now, we're going to have a second conference, then we're going to have lunch, and then we're going to be writing a letter to our Blessed Mother. I, I begin to start thinking of what were some of the closed doors that have led you to our Blessed Mother and to these three dynamics of love, uh, and how they may be an open door for you in relationship to the ways I've shown. Start thinking about that. What are my closed doors? What are the open doors? What could be the creative result in, in regards to the ways I've shown? Anybody else? Um, you stay here. No. You stay here. That's right. You stay here, and the shoot start at 11 o'clock. You want to resume at what? Then I'll find, give them a little, you know, a minute to the bathroom. The snacks are here.